Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. I have a little shorter episode today, and I wanted to discuss the secret of imagining. I get a lot of people that contact me that are struggling. They say that they have imagined a certain scenario, and it's not coming to fruition. And there's also just a general idea or understanding of imagining that I want to talk about. One of the reasons that people love to listen to Neville because his ideas resonate and they're very interesting. But when they try his techniques out, they struggle with it. I have people that contact me all the time that struggle with visualization and imagining something that they perhaps have not experienced. Why is it that we are not all billionaires by now? I mean, we can just imagine that we're being a billionaire, right? When you really delve into that question, you can answer it. You can have an experience, anything that you imagine, but are you properly imagining? In most cases, you are not. For instance, I have people that say, Brian, I've imagined that I'm a quarterback for a football team and I've never become quarterback for a football team. It's almost like a gotcha. See, I proved to you that I couldn't do it. I imagined I was in sports, but I never did it. It is much more complicated than that. The process is that you have to reach a point in imagination where it's natural and easy. And for many of us, it takes a daily routine of entering into a world where it becomes natural and easy. If I ask you to become a top 10 best-selling author, there is no way for you to know what that's like. How do you know what it's like to be a top 10 best-selling author? You've never been a top 10 best-selling author. And what you're doing is more than just imagining what it would look like. You're imagining what it would feel like. You're in a world where you are a top 10 author. Oftentimes we imagine some exciting event where we jump up and down in celebration, but we're not imagining the life that we're living. The easiest example for this is the billionaire. People say, Brian, I want to be a billionaire and I imagine it. And I promise you, you're not imagining being a billionaire. Do you really know what it's like to be a billionaire? I promise you, you do not. It is a world that is completely different than the world that we are in. If you're a billionaire, it requires a lot of work to imagine and understand the reality of a billionaire. This is why a lot of great self-help teachers will recommend, hey, you need to be reading autobiographies of the person that you want to become. If you want to become a billionaire, you need to read the autobiographies of other billionaires. And it's constantly changing. We're in a new age where you wake up in the morning and you have access to different technologies than perhaps in the past. But a billionaire's life is beyond imagining what you are in now. You wake up with different thoughts, you have different concerns, you have different worries. There's a lot of things that go through your mind that you might not be thinking about. Oftentimes, what you think of as a billionaire is not what you think. So you might have to be making payments on multiple properties. You have to deal with multiple people that work under you. Uh, When you wake up in the morning, what do you really think of as a billionaire? For most of us, we don't quite understand that. We can get some understanding by looking at documentaries and reading books, but the thoughts that cross through your mind are what is that you're imagining. Neville Goddard was really good at imagining because he had a very, very profound sense of imagination, like an actor. The key to imagining and the secret to imagining is to become the actor. That's when the imagination becomes reality. Why is it that actors are always the best reality creators? Or in the sad cases where they take on a very troubling role, why is it their lives get so messed up? Look at Heath Ledger. He played the Joker so well and his life suffered from it. He imagined that he was in that role. As I mentioned in my interview with Liam Rimes, you have a superpower if you are an actor. You're not just sitting there for a couple of minutes and imagining a scenario and then walking away, then living your life, which is still a level of imagination. Imagination 
is the most powerful and profound thing that you can do. That is when you're really connected with God. You're always connected to God all the time through your imagination. When you pray to God, that's one thing. You can talk to God. But understand, your relationship with God is not a verbal communication. You're not talking to God, and then God talks back to you with words that you hear in your head. God communicates with you through your imagination. It's not talking, it's imagining. So when you're in that state of imagination, imagining or daydreaming, that's when you're with God 100%. That's when you're connected to the universal mind of all the realities that are possible for you. So what you're trying to do is enter into some level of the multiverse that shows you what is possible. If you can imagine something, that means that it's occurring or existing somewhere in reality, somewhere in the multiverse. So the example is, you want to become a billionaire. Now, another good metaphor that I can give you is, you don't wake up tomorrow and become a billionaire. You don't sit and imagine then wake up tomorrow to become a billionaire. It's very much like you're jumping onto a, a ongoing train. If a train is moving at 300 miles per hour and you jumped on it, you just get destroyed. It's the same as becoming a billionaire or when somebody says, hey Brian, I imagined I was president of the United States. I never became president. It doesn't work like that. You are jumping onto a vibrational timeline that is moving at a certain speed that, that has a certain momentum to it that perhaps in many cases requires other sorts of imagining. So the billionaire, you need to be running at the same speed as the train that you're jumping onto. That may require a lot of steps to get to that point. Imagination is the process that you're using to get to that point. But people think in the explanations that Neville gives is that you sit at night and you imagine for a few minutes and then it's done. Neville Goddard also emphasizes that it's the home that you go to. So you're not just imagining and then walking away from it. It's the place that you return to. It's the place that you go to. So you need to imagine on a continuous and regular basis. When you continually imagine a scenario, then you reach a point where you sort of forget that you're imagining and you accept it as reality. For many of us that are maybe making $30,000 a year and struggling with our bills every month just to even make the rent payment, and then we sit and try to imagine being a billionaire, a lot of times all we have is our present circumstances and past memories in order to imagine. We would have no clue what it's like to own our own jet, pay for the fuel, have a helicopter pick us up, live in our own mansion, to have 10 bathrooms, to have multiple working staff with us. We just don't understand what it feels like and what it's like to live in that life. We can understand when we sort of become the actor playing the role and then playing the role on a regular basis. Another interesting way to look at this is that all things are possible with the imagination. Why is it that on set, that when people play roles where they uh, are lovers, that oftentimes actors fall in love on movie sets, it happens all the time because you're going into a place where you imagine that you love this person then you play the role that you're loving this person and then you've brought about this reality where you love this person. I'm saying that if you get any two people together, if they imagine that they love each other, they will love each other because all things are possible. So if you were playing a role where you love someone, even at the beginning when you don't really love them, you'll eventually love them. But to become a billionaire or to become an astronaut or to become a football player are things that are outside of the normal realm of your own reality. So it requires extra work. You can visualize some of the aspects of it. But for instance, let's look at football. You want to be a professional quarterback for an NFL team, but you might not have any clue what it's like to live the life of being a professional athlete. What you have to eat every day, what kind of workout that you have, dealing with your coaches, sitting in a game and knowing all the plays, thinking in the moment as to where you're going to throw the ball, that is a result of continual imagining over many, many years. It is possible 
but you have to continually be in that state of imagination. I would say that sporting events in general are battles of imagination. That's what you're seeing when you're watching a great basketball game or hockey game or football game is all of those people have constantly been imagining even the slightest thing. For a hockey game, maybe it's how they slap that puck into the net, how they skate and all the different levels of it. When you're imagining, it's a constant process of imagining even the small and tiny things. And the best players are able to imagine properly within their environment and those become the most successful. So if you find yourself outside of the world that you want to be within, it's going to take some work. It's going to take research. It's going to take time. It's going to take meditation. It's going to take a certain level of daydreaming. So a lot of you may have given up on achieving large sums of money, like a hundred million dollars or a billion dollars, because you tried it for a few times. Maybe you tried it for months. But I want you to go back and ask yourself, were you properly imagining? Do you really know what it feels like? And when I say feels like, because Neville Goddard says the feeling is the secret. Feeling is not just the feeling in your body. Feeling is a state that encompasses what you're thinking, what you're seeing, how you're walking, how you're breathing, all of the major steps that are a part of a state. So. If you're imagining properly, you're bringing in all these things. That's why Neville was so good at imagining. When you hear him describe how he imagines a particular state, he brings in what he calls all the tones of reality. What you need to do is bring in all the tones of reality. And he gives examples of this. For instance, when he imagined that he found a boat when there was no boat available and he got a ticket for a boat, he imagined seeing the boat the smell of the ocean. He would imagine the, the spray of the ocean as it hit his face. He would imagine walking up the gangplank to the boat. He would imagine the boat moving as he stood in the water. He would imagine the smell of the boat. And he would go deep on all five senses of the experience and he would also integrate what he would be thinking, like he's happy and grateful that he's getting on the boat. Another example he gives of somebody that is imagining a new house being built. Most of us would just say, oh, I'm so excited this new house is being built. But somebody that imagined properly imagined, oh, they have to deal with all the people that are working on the house and they are frustrated because of how much time it takes and the little things that are involved in the creation of the new house. You must start to get really realistic with this state. And it's always not perfect. There's a lot of little details that you can imagine. And the better that you get at it, the better and more fine-tuned your reality will be. The secret to imagining is that you have to enter into one of these states and forget that you've entered into the state. That's the key. And a lot of times we will sit and imagine, but the whole time we're imagining, we're still aware of our current reality. We must die to that old reality and play a game of make-believe, which to many seems insane. But it does allow for the creation of your reality. So if you constantly are imagining on a regular basis for something, you're going to enter into that field of awareness. You're reading books, for instance, about billionaires. You're talking to billionaires if you can. You're getting their general ideas and ways of thinking. You're imagining what it's like to wake up in the morning, to go to sleep, what kind of food that you eat, the people that you meet, the way your phone rings, what kind of texts that you get. You're imagining how you get your money, what kind of car that you're driving. You're imagining all the little subtle things. When we walk through life, we have different thoughts that are floating through our mind based upon what our current situation is. I might be thinking about having to make my most recent tax payment. That would imply that I am self-employed. I make a quarterly tax payment when I make my tax payments. If you want to be self-employed, that's one of the things that you would imagine. Yes, there are examples given by Neville Goddard of people imagining a conversation where you're being congratulated, and sometimes that works. There is a bridge of incidents that's occurred, but in that process, you're imagining something. In most cases, somebody's not going to congratulate you that you're a billionaire. There's not going to be a conversation which would imply that it happened suddenly. Many of the cases, such as the 
NFL quarterback or the billionaire will require a long stream of bridges of incidents to bring you to that point. Not always. Perhaps you will win the lottery for a billion dollars. It hasn't been done yet. There hasn't been a billion dollar lottery yet, but it could happen. I don't like to imagine lotteries because when you really put your emphasis on winning a lottery, you're emphasizing the how and not the way to get there. So you can get the billion dollars. You may not know how it's going to happen, but you're going to imagine the mindset, the frame of mind, the way that you would feel and all the thoughts that you would have. And that's the secret. That's the secret. You go through the day, you start writing it down in a journal and let your mind come up with the different thoughts. Enter into that reality and really, really become specific with all the things that you would be thinking, things you would be doing, the things you'd be seeing, the things you'd be feeling, the things you'd be smelling. Add in all the tones of reality as Neville Goddard says and imagine those on a regular basis. The more you imagine, the more you bring those energies, ideas, into your timeline if you don't know the feeling of something then make that imagine that you discover the feeling of it make that your intention say i want to know what the feeling of being a billionaire is i want to know the feeling of being an nfl quarterback is whatever that is whatever thing that you want to imagine a lot of times the easy stuff is 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 fun and easy but a lot of times people come to me and it's the big stuff they're trying to imagine that they're struggling with. And that's because their imagination is blocked with an incapability of seriously entering into the reality that they want. And that requires intention, energy, focus, and understanding. Attention, energy, and focus, and understanding. So you put your attention on what you want. You bring energy to it. You focus on it, and then you have a greater level of understanding. Continually seek clarity on what it is that you want to create, especially if it seems complicated. By seeking clarity, you'll understand. Clarity may be the most important part of the process. Many of us simply do not understand what the state is and how it would be like and what it would feel like the secret to imagining is entering into the state. I recommend, and you can check out, I have talked about this in previous episodes, taking an acting class. Learn how to become an actor. You don't have to tell anybody else, but you can walk around saying, I'm a billionaire. I'm a billionaire walking into this bathroom. I'm a billionaire driving my car right now. Continually imagining being in that state of mind. Now, personally, I have... No desire to be a billionaire. I don't need to be the billionaire. My satisfaction goes beyond money. And that's just where I'm at. Many of you may be in a different place. But still, there may be some complexity to what it is you're trying to imagine. And it's something that you're thinking of outside of yourself. Once you become the actor, you are the role. You're playing the role. And you're doing the thing. The secret to imagining is entering into the role, as Neville Goddard would say, from that reality. So I want you to start trying this. I want you to really break down the thing that you're trying to imagine. And I want you to put in the comments or message me. If, if you're struggling trying to imagine what something would feel like, bring others into it. And if you start working in groups and you have friends, hey, I, I don't know what it would feel like to win this tennis match, to become a, a new programmer, whatever it is that you're trying to do. If it's specific to one person, then, hey, ask people for their advice and you'll get some interesting perspectives. A lot of times that might be what you need. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution.